Okay, welcome back to Design a Computer from Scratch. In this video, we're going to break a bunch of stuff and fix it. In the previous video, we added a register to register transfer function. We placed it in the peripheral space so it wouldn't consume an instruction, and it worked. And we also added a reset key. We took over key zero and turned it into a reset. So now, if you want to run any of the demos, the ones with key zero on it won't work, but hey, can't, can't keep backwards compa compatibility and make improvements at some point. We also added an optional nested subroutine, last in, first out, a LIFO, and that allows for deeper subroutine levels than just one. And we added an option for setting memory size options so it didn't have to be rewritten every time. In this video, we're going to take a look, a very close look, at the instruction set and ask the question, can we free up any of the opcodes that we have in the encoding right now? We only have two free opcodes. We started with 16 opcodes in those four bits. And should we, even worse maybe, ask the question, should we reorder the instructions? Going to give a warning up front, any code will need to be recompiled if we do any changes. And those changes will not be backwards compatible with previous VHDL code, nor will the previous VH, nor will code compiled before run without being recompiled. But if you recompile it, it'll run just fine. We didn't change anything in the instructions. They're all exactly the same. They're just coded differently. But if you run the previous ROM files, the MIF files, it'll break. Well, if we look through what we got here, we only have register 5 or opcode 5 and opcode F as unused right now. It would be nice to reclaim some more opcode space. And they just look chaotic when you look at them, and I think they could be organized a lot better. To free up an opcode, looking at the return from subroutine, RTS, mnemonic, it doesn't have anything in D11 down to D0. And when we look at the shifts and rotates, there's a lot of encoding there, but there's a lot of X's, so there's empty bits and fields. So we could t tighten the constraints on the shifts and rotates, add another bit, one of those maybe D4, let's say, as a flag bit, or D3 as a flag bit for what operation we want to perform. And we could use up that RTS, put that it back into the same opcode fields and free up that opcode. So right now, uh, the way I solved it was to put those in D3 and D4. D4 has to be zero for shifts or for RTSs, but shifts and rotates would have zero for D3, and RTS would have one for D3. That leaves us two more reserve locations, and that would actually be 1x for RS3. I've noted it as reserved opcode 3, and it's only a subset of the opcodes. It's not the full opcode 3, but at least they'll be a part. For things that don't use those other fields or use some small subset of them, it would allow us to pack some more stuff in there. So not only did we free up the spot, the B location down here, where RTS was, but we've created some more space up here in the what's currently the three in this chart for a single for things that don't need those bits. Okay, since we've already taken the leap here to break the opcode encoding, what else can we break? Uh, with the hope that we'll make things better in the end. And when we look, the low hanging fruit is ALU operations. They're just scattered all over the place and it would be nice to move them to adjacent coding. So we put add immediate way back here at 0000. zero, zero, zero. XOR immediate was an, an, an initial spot in the design, or it was added. We had AND and ORs to begin with, but they wouldn't fit next to the ANDs and ORs, so we put that at 0100. Zero, zero. It'd be nice to pack all four of those together. If we do that, then the ALUs could use uh, less bits of decoding. It could just say, hey, it's an ALU if it's these first two bits or something. The other thing is not only do we want them adjacent, but since there's four, we can make those first two bits the same for all opcodes. And that, that will give us a good bang for the buck, I think. So the new encoding I picked was to use 89AB 
for those four because we're going to be shuffling them all around here as we go along or a lot of them and those are now consecutive if the top bits one the second bit down zero then the two bits below that determine which operation is actually being performed so we could do a pretty simple decode on that it doesn't need to be nearly as complicated as it is right now in fact we could just run into the ALU those bits if we really wanted to but let's stick with the method of decoding we have right now it'll still reduce down some in the code the HDL code when it compiles it the, the jumps and branches can all be put together because they're all very similar in pattern they all take an absolute address PC address and they can go at C D E and F uh, remember we made the branch equal to zero and branch EQ the same as each other and then BNZ and BNE the same as each other as well so um, that's really only four instructions with six different mnemonics that can be coded for them uh, just leave the IO read and writes at six and seven they're adjacent they're not that much different that's just the bottom bit that changed in the 15 14 13 12 bit D12 in the ROM code well, the last things, some of the last things we have left are the LRI, load register media, and compare register with an immediate value. And we can put those adjacent to each other as well. They both, one of them loads the register, the other one doesn't. So they're not exactly the same, but their fields are really very similar, registers and immediate values. This, again, will reduce some decoding in the compiler when it compiles the FPGA. And more than anything, it'll just make things that are similar, group them together. So now let's look at the regularity we have. We have three opcodes that are free at 0, 1, and 2. And we have all of these shifts and arithmetics together here at 3 with D4 set to 0 and D3 set to 0. We have RTS, return from subroutine, at 3 also with this D3 bit set high to differentiate it from the other ones. Uh, we probably could have packed it down here next to, uh, probably could have packed it in, in another bit down here and figured out a way to make it even more efficient. We'll have plenty reserved in three here. Uh, we'll have certainly have one, two, three, four, five, six, two to the six uh, possibilities there for other sorts of instructions if they only play with a register or or something simple like we could um, have an instruction that would invert a register feed it the register give it the instruction three make it a invert uh, right now it's essentially the same thing as XORing with FF but if we wanted to add an instruction like invert so it was explicit we could code that down in here as well and that would all fit within this sort of bit patterny stuff that's up here That'll, that'll be just fine. Uh, load register and immediate compare right next to each other. Now everything looks very similarly packed here right next to each other. The four ALU opcodes, XOR, OR, AND, and ADD are all right next to each other and that's much cleaner than it was. The whole chart looks much cleaner. Uh, if we'd done some planning from the beginning we probably would have ended up here but we really didn't do any planning. We were just throwing down some stuff we thought we want to play with and figured later we would refactor it and clean it all up. So at the end you've got the jumps and the branches and they're equally similar with PC address being an absolute address. So it's much cleaner instruction set right now. Uh, also created an opcode package file so that the opcodes can all be defined in one place in one file. It's the next file the CPU it 001 itself will say we'll use this op0 op or whatever it is. Now remember these are reserves that's why they're just called op012. Now 3 has multi-use so it isn't just the single 3 um, three value um, mnemonic so it needs a more generic name of op3. Now these could also be defined as hacks. So it was x0, x, double quote 1, double quote all the way down through x double quote F double quote to make it a little bit cleaner and easier to read this is a little tough to go through and double check it but it is working with uh, test case 9-1 uh, let's see how, what can we do well, we can't do anything about loading code that was assembled before and is now wrong 
the only thing we could do with that is to reassemble it. But what we can do is see if the code, the source code, uh, has a particular version number in it. And then I think we'll just add a version number column to the header itself to tell what core version it's running. And that'll show up in the in the uh, uh, in the source when it reads the ASM file. And if it's not correct, print out a message saying, hey, this file probably needs to be updated. Probably didn't need to do this, really, because it's uh, you have to recompile code anyhow, and you don't know if you didn't recompile it unless you run it. It just doesn't work. But we can now put up a message where the assembler can see that that file has been updated. And it'll say, if, if, there was, if it wasn't there, it'll pop up an info box. And it'll say, hey, the header's messed up. Check out the command window. And there isn't much over there at the moment. It would say probably needs the version number added to the final column header. So it looked to see if there was a column with the version number. If there wasn't, it complained about it. Uh, the other thing we can do is add, or I did, was add the I.O. memory map. So if you create a file that's the same name as the source file, which would be like source name, part maybe part 9, dash one or something dot csv well if you make the same source name part nine with an underscore mmap that will use that as a memory map and the file looks like this over here it's very tightly constrained as well it's io address with an underscore dir and a mnemonic so if it sees an io instruction to address zero it's a read it'll print in the list file LED read. So when you read through the list file, you're not looking at IO3 and you think, oh, what's IO3 and a read? Oh, IO3 and a read is a seven segment high. So you can create this. It can be read, write, or RW for read, write. And it's smart enough to go through there and pick out the right mnemonic to print. If it doesn't have an MMAP file, underscore MMAP file, as described here, it will still print uh, what it had before, which is IO underscore 0001, whatever the address is. Uh, so it's backwards compatible with the previous source code. You don't have to create your MMAP file, but if you're debugging and you want to, hey, what was 6 of a read? Oh, 6 read is the VDU control register. What's 6 right? Oh, that's the VDU. That looks backwards. That is actually backwards. Uh, write is a control. Read is a status. Anyway, it, it's sort of the right idea here at the very least anyway and if you want to look at an example it's part 9-1 underscore test 1 underscore mmap dot csv and it's up in the source code folder and it'll be a lot easier reading the list file and here's an example of that so if you're reading the switches or writing the leds now the comment here sort of helps you but hey you're right here and you see j12 switches well that's reading io12 read read J12 switches. So much easier to look through the list file to see what's going on. Okay, one of the other nice things that I did while I was here is made an assembler executable so you don't have to have Python 3 anymore to run the assembler. So if you've got discouraged up to this point thinking, ah, I don't want to install Python 3, that's just another can of worms. Well, I made a Windows executable. It's a large file. It's about 10 megabytes. It's just what the executable maker program does and it's located in the folder under assembly in a folder called dist for distribution and it's got the pi assemble underscore cpu underscore zero zero one with the dot exe it's a windows executable if you want to make an executable for linux or something else you're on your own to try to figure out how to do that but this worked fine for me okay so short video hopefully what we did here is we refactored the instruction set but that broke all the previous code at least the MIF files are broken it didn't break any source files but you do have to reassemble the source files if you want to use a piece of source you've already written it did not break any of the code that was written it just broke the ROM output file the MIF file if you play with a git hub branch and you want to try to play with this new assembler it's broken it won't work for it you'll have to have the assembler currently has to match the VHDL if you want to stick with what you got stick with what you got don't go and grab the new assembler and then say hey I assembled my code and it, it broke everything it'll break everything unless you match the current VHDL build to the assembler build 
and you just can't mix the two either way. You can't use the new assembly code with the old uh, VHDL files, and you can't use the old uh, MIF file with the new VHDL code. It's it's both had to get changed at the same time. But I hope that you can see the advantage is a much more regular instruction set. It's much more orderly, much more patterned, should be easier for decoding. And it did create one new reserved instruction plus, well, one and a, one and a quarter maybe, or one and an eighth instructions. Uh, some extra bits for doing single register kind of stuff or unary sort of operators. And we added an IO memory map capability, which I think is good and made the assembler executable exe file. We also created the GitHub. Of course, the tip has the current version. It always will have the current version if you're watching an old video. It doesn't have the version you're, you want to play with if you want to play with what's an old version. But we did create branches for that. There's a branch that has this part 11 video in it. And we also made it, because this is a big enough change, made a version 3.0. I think it's lowercase v 3.0.0 release and as usual the top level entity it's been changed now for the last few videos to cpu underscore top hopefully this is helpful I'll leave a comment if you like it thank you for your time if you want more information you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have youtube videos on them as well we have a store in tindy where we sell all of our cards Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.